Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, Kathy and Michael for asking me to be a part of this call. Uh, I was playing around with ideas on what exactly to demo from our site or what particular collection to focus on. And I kept coming back to the reality of the current situation that we're living in and how digital collections and initiatives have changed or have had to be redefined, reprioritized as a result. So I thought I would give a quick overview of our own rethinking of digital initiatives and some new, something new that's been recently launched as a result in how we're trying to support this new initiative. And it's known as the Curated Collections Program that's run through special collections here at Princeton University Library. Um, as I said, I'm Kim Lehman. I'm the Library IT Project Manager. I'm also the product owner for Deepol and our digital repository, which is known as Figgy. So what is Deepol? Deepol or Digital PUL is Princeton's instance of the Spotlight application. So as many of you know, it's a collection showcase that we hope provides a user-friendly interface for our ever-growing number of thematic digital collections and exhibitions, as well as accompanying content from library staff, curators, and other subject experts. Curated exhibits and collections take several forms in Deepol. They may be the primary point of discovery for an entire library collection or a subset of one. They may highlight special collections selected for a class or have a thematic focus on a specific subject, a time period, or a genre. Others may serve as a companion to a physical exhibit from our Milberg Gallery, for example. Recently, however, we as a library were faced with the need to rethink our digital initiatives and our goals. What can we do when we're separated from our physical objects? And what happens when digitization of materials for approved project proposals and forthcoming exhibitions comes to a halt? To paraphrase the words of my colleague Emma Sarconi, how do we encourage, activate, and inspire the use of our collections from afar? And can we provide a dynamic and flexible space where colleagues may experiment and explore the myriad of different stories that can be told using the wealth of materials already in our digital repository? As it turns out, we can do this. And through a new initiative that is the Curated Collections Program coordinated by Emma Sarconi from Special Collections, we can workshop new and different ways through Deepol to tell those stories. So what is the Curated Collections Program? The program consists of a selection of 10 to 15 images from our digital repository, arranged and described around a theme by Princeton University Library staff. This theme can be based on anything the site builder envisions. And what I find to be particularly cool about this initiative is that it's meant to inspire individuals to break out of silos and explore other collections or subjects that they might not otherwise work with. So selected themes may encompass material from across collection holdings like rare books, graphic arts, public policy, Western Americana, area studies, university archives, the Coats and Children's collection, ephemera, and the, the list goes on. The goal of each curated collection is to offer a well-researched but limited taste for a topic and a single glimpse into the scope of our collections in an effort to inspire further inquiry. The vision is that curated collections exhibits will be launched every Monday, every two, or each Monday every two weeks. And our first exhibit, which is Ho for the Open Country, uh, the promise of the public park, is now published and available to the public. So the process, it quickly became apparent that a clear line of communication, a well-formed workflow for the program, a basic understanding of how to search for content in our digital repository and useful guidelines and training opportunities for working in Deepol would be essential to make this initiative both accessible and exciting to fellow colleagues and future builders. Emma Sarconi and Sarah Logue from Special Collections created an incredibly helpful document laying out the goals and intentions of the program along with a step-by-step -step workflow of the process, a content template for exhibitions didactic, a master template for a final exhibit title and image selections, which goes to me, and a Deepool website builder checklist. Each builder will have a Google Drive set up and assigned to them with the workflow and documentation templates already within, so it's really easy for them to get into and start to work with. So once they've picked their items, what happens next? Uh, the title of the exhibit plays a key role in how we draw content from our digital repository into the Deepol exhibit. So once the site builders have decided on a title and the selected items they wish to be in their exhibit, the list comes to me by using that collection and image request template. A collection is then created in the repository along with a custom URL 
and all requested items are tagged with the exhibit name. Finally, an exhibit is created in Deepl and all the items that have been tagged will be made available to builders for their exhibit. So this is the first exhibit that we have of this program and it was actually created by Emma Sarconi and it was a really great moment for she and I both to kind of think together on what would be needed in the future for others to be able to do this same process. So it was decided early on that every site needs a home page, a browse page, an about page, and ideally a learn more page. So we basically identified the basics of what folks would need and to learn in order to build out their site. And while one-to-one -one group tutorials on the basics of Deepl and Figgy are helpful, the need for a general reference guide that would teach builders how to create a collection in Deepl by utilizing the variety of features available to them became a priority. But for the exhibit itself, if we just get into it as well, she has her home page, she has her her exhibit pages, as well as her learn more page. And we too use the universal viewer. If I can get into one of these items here. And it will come up at some point in the near future. Uh, this has been given structure in Figgy and more information is available along the side. But we also have content beneath. And something that I'm particularly proud of, our developers are amazing. And a user request that was given to us a few months back was, it would be really, really helpful if items in Deepl could somehow link back to either the online catalog or the finding aid. So individuals can discover the item in our online catalog to be able to either check it out or to view it in a reading room, which is what we have here. And then it goes back to our online catalog for the actual item. And you can do a reading room request in this way. I really liked what Emma did with the learn more page. We tried to keep things, uh, you know, a very simple overview of a great idea, but inspire others to read more about the collection as well as give links again with one of the widgets that we use here in Deepol to either you know, specific websites or back to the catalogs so that individuals can find some of the references that Emma used in order to build her site. Thanks to an example I found while surfing the Stanford Spotlight website, I decided to build a guide on how to build exhibits in Deepol itself. A link to the guide is shared with individuals interested in building an exhibit in the Curated Collections program as well. So, I thought I would give a brief overview of our how to build collections guide and I would love to use this time for any feedback or questions you may have because this really is a new initiative. And we do want it to be easy and understandable for all who are interested in building our site. So if I go to digital PUL. The guide itself is called building exhibits in digital PUL. And we tried to be as basic as we could with the different facets we could learn from. Uh, we have a simple, what is digital PUL? Before you build with inspiration on what to think about as you're building your exhibit. Ideas and inspiration, not only from Princeton University Library, but other institutions that use the Spotlight instance or Spotlight application. An information page on homepage and dashboard, the configuration facets, curation facets, what are widgets and standard and exhibit item widgets. I thought I would just go into an example for standard widgets. Uh, the descriptions are a huge thank you to Stanford University Libraries. And something else that we decided to add to our, to our exhibits uh, guide was video demos of how each, well, how each uh, widget works, but also the configuration facets, the curation facets, as well as the homepage and dashboard. And I thought I would go into an example of a feature page, which several individuals are going to use. So if they go into the demo, which is silent, they're given an, a visual idea of how to use the curation facet, add a new page, and also the functionality when it, within the curation facet itself.
what we were trying to do is just give multiple ways in which to teach the same thing as well as the one on one tutorials. This would be a nice reference, we hope to give a visual as well as a description of what it is and what it does. And we're hoping that with these three methods in order to teach individuals that the curated collections program will be an easily accessible way to tell stories with the digitized content that we already have in our digital repository. And like I said, I would, I would welcome feedback individuals to look through the site and, and let me know how we can improve it or what isn't working. And that's what I have. Thank you very much. Nice job, Kim. Thank you very much. We appreciate that good site and certainly appreciate the uh, the tutorial section there. Uh, we're starting to get several of those and this is, I think, going to be very beneficial for uh, new customers to, to spotlight. Um, Thank you. Anybody have questions or comments for Kim at this time? Um, I, I don't want I don't want to take up all the airtime. Um, I have a comment, but I would like to give the opportunity for someone else to go first. Uh, Kim, I will, I will jump in then. I, um, I noticed the triple IF logos throughout your site. Uh, yes. I, I will say, uh, and I also meant to ask you as well, Christy, the uh, use of triple IF at your institution. Kathy and I have been talking about putting together uh, one of these calls and we focus on Triple IF. We'll be inviting you back in Princeton. I know Princeton's doing a lot of work with Triple IF. Yes. Um, good job. I like to see that. Thank you. I, I do too, actually. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, you know, it, it is one of actually I can I can even show you on our page. We try to we try to highlight that as much as possible. Um, because the reuse of our digitized content is exactly one of our primary goals. And, you know, allowing others to harvest it via the IIIF manifests is, is really such a fantastic way to share information as well as our images. Oh, we totally agree. The more, the more we see that and, and the more that we can leverage that technology, I think it's great. Uh, also, Kathy, I, I only need about five minutes to wrap up. So that gives us about five minutes for for questions, so go for it. Mm -hmm. um, Kim, first of all, I want to apologize for not weighing in on the um, on the Code for Live Spotlight Service channel yet. I'm really under um, an avalanche of work. Um, I know understandable. My goodness, it's happening to many of us. <laughs> so um, back to back, you know. Um, product owner um, cycles on different products that are not even spotlight and stuff. So it's, it's a little intense. Um, but I, I am really intrigued with what you've done here for building exhibits in, in digital PUL. Um, um, I, you, you have some really great ideas that I would love to mine. You know, what, what we do is um, I would say, you know, over 95% of the content probably, I'm just making a wild guess, in our um, now 105 total exhibits that have been published uh, come from the Stanford Digital Repository. So we leave that to um, exhibit creators to upload their content using um, the unique identifiers that we mint for either collections or um, individual items. But um, we have this notion of something called just-in-time training. Um, <laughs> a, a lot of times people are, um, people 
people want to create an exhibit, right? And um, they come to us and they go, oh, I want you to show me how to do all this, but they haven't looked at, uh, we have something that's similar to a, 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 your page before you build, right? Mm -hmm. um, they haven't looked at that, their content, maybe they're thinking about uh, proposing that it be digitized, <laughs> you know? Yes. <laughs> And they're so excited about Spotlight, which is great, you know, but they want to, <laughs> and, and so we really gently talk to them and tell them how important it is that they're truly ready to start um, <laughs> yeah. when, when, we, when we train them and we sort of explain to them, this is going to be the best use of your time. Mm -hmm. And also coincidentally, it's the best use of our time. <laughs> you know, and so um, what we do is we do a, a it's it's a custom training session, but it's relatively standard. We kind of tweak it depending upon um, maybe people have a lot of video content or something like that, right? But we but we do it. We train exhibit creators on a per exhibit basis, um, and uh, works quite well over Zoom, uh, thankfully. And um, and then we also. Um, so that's 90 minutes. We also have a pre-publication guide that we, that we um, like a checklist, you know, that we share to people, but we also, um, we also tell them that we prefer to consult with them um, after they've gone through that guide, but before they publish. Oh, wonderful. But, but they ultimately control publication. We do not. Right, and, and say that would be the same here. Uh, and what I like about the particular program, the, the curated collections program, is that in their workflow, the, you know, the approval of the, the approval, the, you know, the review of the title, as well as what is actually written as far as editing and thing goes, that all goes within the department. And, you know, for me, as, as a person on the IT side, I'm there for any questions regarding Deepol itself or Figgy, uh, which is our repository. But also, you know, what isn't working in Deepol or what isn't there that they would like as far as, you know, we're, we're so lucky to have such a great group of developers. Um, you know, if, if something, if I hear it once, if I hear it twice, three times, there's no harm in making a GitHub ticket for it, asking if it's a possibility and seeing if it can be worked into the next sprint when they're ready to work on, on our instance of the Spotlight application, which has been really helpful. Um, but as, I love the idea of just the one-on-one -on -one exhibit per exhibit training for each. I think that's a really great idea. Uh, and do you, do you, you know, kind of talk within the forge to say, have you gone through the, the guide and do you have any questions before we have our Zoom uh, conversation? Oh, actually, to be perfectly honest, I am a gatekeeper. So before I'm willing to set up <laughs> Zoom, <laughs> they have to be ready to build their exhibit. Great. So, um, yeah, that's, um, I'm, 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 I'm not going to train them unless they've done their homework. And so that's just using all kind of, uh, all kinds of kind words and, you know, stuff via email to make sure that they are truly ready. Um, Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we should talk more about that when we have more time. I would love to. That would be great. We do have about five minutes or so before the, to make sure I'm not muted, before the, the top of the hour. Uh, 